Hello, my name is Alexis and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing another video on sickness and what nobody told me about gaining weight that I wish that I would have known. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join the fam. So basically, I went on a weight gain journey and it lasted probably, in all seriousness, probably about four months, five months. Um, and I gained 30 pounds within that time frame. So kind of a short amount of time to be gaining that kind of weight, but that's what I was looking for. So it was cool. And it was like, it was like mostly in the booty. For those who haven't seen my previous video on how I did gain the weight, I am going to link it right here. And during this time, I was eating a calorie surplus and I was also working out a ton and doing a lot of progressive overload and heavy weight lifting. I grew up wanting to be a curvy woman. I would sit and watch BET, the 106 in part countdown and look at all these curvy, you know, video vixens and naturally, God gifted me with a straight up and down, no curve type of body. So I had to do what I could to gain the weight naturally and no shade, no shade, no shade, no shade. I put the work in to gain the curves that I wanted. But as I started to gain the weight and get where I thought I wanted to be, I started realizing things. I really wish this would have been something that somebody brought up to me before I would have gained the weight so I would be prepared for it. Basically, I'm gonna go over a couple of things that maybe I just didn't think of at the time before I did gain the weight. But I watched plenty of weight gain journey videos and stuff like that and I don't think that I've ever really seen a video that has explained these things and I just, I think that I should warn you. <laughs> Full disclaimer, I'm not saying that these things are, you know, the worst, they're so terrible, whatever. I don't regret gaining the weight that I gained and how I did it and everything and where I'm at now. I'm very comfortable and happy with where I'm at now um, and always trying to strive to be better. But had I known these things, I would have been better mentally prepared to take them on headstrong. So yeah, I'm just gonna fill you guys in. Let's start with your body dysmorphia. I think everybody has a form of body dysmorphia or um, I mean, maybe there are some people that don't, but what I've experienced is like people just feel a certain way about their bodies and the way that they look and from people on the outside looking in, they're like, well, you're crazy. But when you see yourself all the time, like you're your worst critic, you know? So. As I started gaining weight, I started feeling very uncomfortable with the amount of weight I was gaining. The thing is, you don't just gain in one place. It's physically impossible. Like you can gain muscle mass in certain places, but when you're gaining weight overall and eating a calorie surplus, you can't run away from the fact that you are going to be gaining weight everywhere. So, you know, you're gonna be a little bit wider in your waist. You're gonna be wider in your hips, your legs. Um, possibly your arms and it's you know all based on genetics and everything but your body tends to allocate weight in areas that you genetically are disposed to gaining weight in so I started to look at myself in the mirror and just be like whoa I am huge <laughs> From somebody who is going from maybe 130, but I was very like ripped, very athletic, um, very low body fat percentage. And um, going from something like that to uh, like not really being able to see all my muscles and um, having like curves that I've never had before, it was really weird and it just kind of made me feel uncomfortable. But had I been more mentally prepared and like somebody would have told me like, you know, your body dysmorphia is gonna kick in and you know, you have to be comfortable with yourself at all stages because that is super important. And I think also I didn't celebrate my body beforehand as much as I should have. And having this body image in your head that affects how you perceive yourself no matter what other people are saying like oh my god you look so good your butt is getting so big look at those thighs like you're like oh yeah thank you thank you um but inside you're kind of like oh my god <laughs> it's just it's kind of a weird thing but had i been prepared for it um i think that i would have handled it a little bit better because i just wasn't appreciating my body like i said during those times 
as you get older, things change rapidly. And say you go through a pregnancy or whatever, your body is gonna change quite a bit. So I feel like having the mindset of like, okay, I'm going to celebrate my body. If it's skinny, if it's thick, if it's um, pregnant, whatever it might be, is a definitely healthier mind state than not being prepared for that and just kind of like going from one extreme to the other. <sighs> Another thing is you're most likely going to have to get rid of all of the clothes that you own or have to get them like tailored or something because they're not gonna fit you anymore. Like yeah, being thick is great and everything and I love it, but I literally had to buy a whole new wardrobe. Like I'm not kidding when I say I could only wear athletic wear and um, that's pretty much it. Like none of my jeans fit, um, my skirts didn't fit, some of my tops weren't fitting. But I would say definitely like my lower half portion, I didn't have anything to wear but leggings and like stretchy shorts and stuff. So that's another thing to think about when you're going on your weight gain journey. In addition, the clothes that you previously would have worn that would have uh, been very flattering to your body type um, may not be as flattering anymore. Like the things that I would uh, or I used to wear often, it just didn't look good on my body anymore. So I had to figure out, okay, like, you know, let me work with my shape now. Like I have to refigure out what looks good on me, how things fit, um, my size. I still am not sure what my size is, but I'm definitely a medium and I was a small before. So especially if you have like clothes that you have held on to for a long time or that you really love. Um, but there are really great websites like Depop, Poshmark, stuff like that, uh, where you can actually sell your clothes. So at least you're getting some use out of it and getting some money out of it so that you can put it towards your next wardrobe haul. But yeah, this is something that I had never thought about in my life because I would never had this issue, but your legs are gonna touch and they're gonna rub and it's gonna cause a rash, which is known as chafing. I actually had never had this issue before and I started getting like a little, little bumps and little rashes and with my skin type, I scar really easily. So it left little like marks and stuff. So um, I actually invested into like, like a, I forget what they called it. It was like an anti-friction stick and you just rub it in between your thighs. But I definitely feel like that was a must. <laughs> if I didn't have that, I don't know what I would do for some occasions. It's very uncomfortable, so yeah, chafing. They definitely don't tell you about chafing. Another thing is when you're a thick person, you've got you know some legs, some booty to you, whatever it is, everything looks inappropriate. I can't tell you how many times I've changed for different events or occasions because I just didn't feel comfortable and I felt like people were gonna stare at me or you know, I felt like it was too revealing. That was something that never ran through my mind before and I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but I truly feel like when I was thinner, I could get away with certain things uh, and it didn't feel uncomfortable and I didn't feel like people were going to be like, oh my God, like I can't believe she's wearing that. Not that I really care about what people think about me or, my, or their judgment based off of like my looks and stuff, but I wanna make sure that I'm comfortable wherever I'm going. You're gonna second guess everything in your closet and be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't wear that, or dang, this is a lot tighter than I remember. You're also gonna sweat in places that you had never previously sweat before. I definitely noticed that I get a lot more boob sweat and, uh, this is so gross, <laughs> a lot of like sweat in my inner thighs and like my kind of like crotch area, I guess. Like this sounds so ratchet. <laughs> But like when I'm working out and stuff, like I have to make sure that I'm wearing appropriate leggings um, that have like an anti-sweat uh, technology in them so that there's not big sweat stains and spots that everybody can see. Cause it's just kind of embarrassing. But um, yeah, that's another thing that I never really had to think about. Like I would sweat in those places, but it wouldn't be so much that I felt like people were staring at it, you know? Stretch marks, oh, look at those tiger stripes. You know, I personally don't really have a big problem with stretch marks. I have them, but I don't have a problem with them. 
Like I'm very comfortable with my stretch marks. When you gain weight, especially gain weight rapidly, it's inevitable that you're gonna have some stretch marks. Like it's gonna happen, but I don't truly feel like it's something that you should worry about or other people are worried about. I actually think that now in life, like of course you have all these like social media influences that are like, perfect and like oh my god like you know has everything done but i feel like real bodies and real people are definitely like i don't want to say trendy but like people can resonate with that a lot more and i feel like people are are um becoming more and more drawn to reality and and people just keeping it real so you know i really wouldn't worry about stretch marks everybody has them i've seen guys have them i've seen women have them of all shapes and sizes so yeah that's just another thing stretch marks are inevitable especially if you're gaining weight but you just own that girl you own that honey you got some tiger stripes okay real men love tiger stripes real women love tiger stripes also with weight gain you might end up getting some cellulite like just a little bit you know a little sprinkle here and there and that has to do with like diet but mostly genetics and if you're through your genetics if you're predisposed to the having cellulite with weight gain you might notice it more but honestly cellulite is like stretch marks it's like another one of those things like you know, I know women feel a certain way about it or whatever, but it comes with a real body, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is what it is, and I think that these things are quite beautiful and can be quite beautiful. And if anybody makes you feel any sort of way about your body or cellulite or stretch marks or whatever it is, or what you might consider imperfections, then they don't deserve your time or to look at you because you're beautiful and yeah. Getting thick is expensive like for real for real i eat a crap ton more than i ever did before and i'm talking like at least like i'm more of like a grazer like a snacker you know like i definitely eat my three meals but i have eating like eight snacks a day on top of that, like for real. Um, so that's another thing to think about if you're trying to budget it out or whatever. Um, make sure to eat at home and try to go for meals that are actually going to hold some weight in your stomach and stay around for a while. You're gonna wanna do like complex carbs and really nice proteins and stuff like that. I don't like eating out a bunch, but when I do eat out, I've eaten. Like I've eaten of you. <laughs> because you need a calorie surplus to maintain your body, your figure that you've just now built, you're always gonna be eating more than you ate before. That's just how it is. Like if you wanna keep your curves, you gotta eat, girl. <laughs> but another thing about calorie surplus that I also wanted to cover is that it can break out your skin if you're more acne prone. It spikes your insulin in your body when you're eating a lot more than you typically do and a lot more than your body tends to use because you need more than your body burns a day to actually gain weight. But you can bounce that out with some water, you know, some water and like, you just have to balance out your macros to tailor to your body's needs and just listen to what your body and your skin needs. So I think that is it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. If you have anything to add to this video, please also comment that because I know that there are probably some things that I didn't cover or that people can relate to or I can relate to so yeah feel free to comment also about that don't forget to hit the like button if you did like this video and also subscribe to join the family I love talking about food and getting thick and fashion and hair and all of that jazz so if you're interested in those things too just go ahead and hit that subscribe button all right peace love and hair grease see you in the next one